Öss. Alright boys, uh, today marks the end of the first week of my first week at work. Um, yeah, so kind of want to just do like a little recap of what's been happening. Uh, I think for the first day, it was a like a general company meeting, like everyone was there. But uh, yeah, they briefed me about all the projects that they have going on. So yeah, after the meeting on Monday, they brought me into a like apartment residential kind of project and they briefed me, blah, blah, blah. Then like on Wednesday, they brought me in on another project. It's like a big master plan for a recreational park and they want me to, you know, come up with some design ideas. I only had like two days to come up with something and then show them. Yeah, I've never done that before. It's like a much shorter time frame than what I'm normally used to. You know, it was like on Wednesday and I had to show something on Friday. So yeah, I spent like two days just like racking my brain and just like working from morning to like late at night. I might just like show you guys what I've done. Like I can't tell you, I can't show you like the drawings, but maybe I can show you like sketches. I can't show you drawings because I don't think I'm legally allowed to do that. So yeah. Yeah, anyways, this uh, project is based in Miri Sarawak. Uh, it's in Malaysia, if you don't know where that is. Let me just show you. Okay, so wait, let's go on maps. Right, it's in the Borneo, so like uh, Brunei is here, Indonesia is here, then Malaysia is these two like islands. Uh, I'm here in Kuala Lumpur in the West Island. Uh, Miri is here, you know, Sarawak is this part, and yeah, so it's here. So yeah, it's like a coastal town kind of thing, uh, which is, you know, pretty cool, pretty chill. The project is based uh, somewhere here. I feel like I'm not selling this place pretty well, but nature, let's see nature. I think it's like big for like caves and stuff. Yeah, see, there we go. Look at that. It's pretty cool. Never been myself, even though I'm Malaysian, but I guess like people don't really like um, travel their own country that much. You know, people usually just like go overseas. But yeah, they have like, you know, caves and stuff. They have like cave tours and it's always like, it looks pretty cool. So yeah, look, look at that. That's pretty cool, eh? That's pretty cool. I actually feel like going now, but... Coronavirus? Haha! <laughs> okay, so the project uh, is gonna go through like a few stages. Programs in master plan, they are like um, an orchard, a resort, a zoo, a school, like then commercial areas and terrace housing and a tamu. A tamu uh, is Malay for market, like a wet market, like a marketplace kind of thing. And the tamu is meant to be like the catalyst of the development because it's like located right in the center, like by the main road. So it's the first thing that, you know, visitors can like see and stuff. It's uh, still a fairly new project. Um, we're still working on ideas and they just brought me in to you know, get my input and stuff. So yeah, I went through my usual routine when coming out with a design. Did all my research with the local culture and stuff. Yeah, so like there's like a ton of like ethnic groups in Sarawak. The main ones are like uh, Milana, Badayu, Dayak, Iban, and Orangulu. Like they have their own like traditional wooden craft and stuff. They have their own clothing. This is the warrior uh, kind of clothing and stuff. And this is like a their own like traditional weaving and they have their own music and they also have their own like uh, guitar kind of thing. It's called like sape or sape. I, I don't know how to say it. They were like famous for head hunting back in the days, but the practice can discontinued now. They celebrate a ton of like festivals and like rituals and stuff. And they also have like really nice like indigenous like delicacies, like a like, bunch of like cakes and stuff and pastries. Yeah, this one is another town that's like by the river and yeah. 
So yeah, from this right, it tells me that um, we should in the tambo in the market in the building that we're designing, we should you know dedicate spaces for their arts and crafts as well, you know, to showcase their local culture. Uh, it shouldn't just be like a place to go and buy groceries. So from like researching their culture, we can develop the programs, and you know we could have workshops for you know teaching people how to do their woodwork, their you know arts and craft kind of thing, and maybe like musical workshop as well you know teaching them how to play their instruments and then maybe culinary workshops as well yeah and their rituals and their parades and the festival so definitely need spaces for that so like as for the local vernacular they are they traditionally live in long houses and uh, long houses are um very very long houses <laughs> which uh in which like the entire village stay in it so like they could be up to like 30 families in one house it will look something like this like it'll be like low rise and they're you know usually on stilts and stuff this is like a, a section of like the interior so you have the tanju which is like the the open veranda which, where they you know um dry their agriculture products then we have the ruai which is the living room behind the tanju that's where they receive guests and they also like gather gather with other villagers to socialize and stuff at the center of the long house they would have the chiefs uh, quarters in the middle and they will gather there in the evenings you know to chat and chill so this is what the living room of the longhouse looks like inside you know it's pretty it's like entire like a hallway kind of thing each tribe has their own you know this distinct style of their you know longhouse so this one's like orangaloo longhouse is pretty it's uh, pretty high up then we also have the milano tall house uh they are also built on stilts i was just studying the you know the roof forms of these uh, of these structures because they look pretty interesting and it could be a cool thing to experiment with for the new for the building that we're proposing maybe you know uh, we can add some modern flavor to it because I think for like a cultural building, you know, it should deliver like a big statement, especially if it's like the catalyst of the development and Spider Main Road as well. Of course, I also looked into Tamil typology, you know, wet market typology in Sarawak, uh, Malaysia. So, like, the very basic uh, Tamil is like people would just like lay their the things that they are selling, you know, produce, arts and crafts, whatever, like on a piece of mat, and the mat is like on the ground. Sometimes they they are just like sporadically placed, and people would just like walk around. Customers would just walk around and you just choose what they want to buy off the ground. And yeah, this is like an example. This is like a temporary one. Uh, they usually just have like tents or like umbrellas, and they are set up like along the road, so uh, they are taken down after you know at night so yeah they're arranged in like a linear pattern with like breaks in between to get through it to the other rows and stuff so some of them are arranged in a radial a a, a circle kind of kind of arrangement there's also like bigger ones um like with like um yeah, a permanent structure and also permanent stalls inside and of course like outside there's like temporary stalls i also noticed that inside they have like really really long rows of you know all the stalls and stuff like that's stretching the entire length of the compound. Yeah, this is some of the things that they sell, like clothes and food, not just, you know, not just groceries. Then you have just like massive, massive like market. Again, they are arranged in like rows as well, like really, really long rows. I think the umbrellas could be an interesting thing to have in our proposal, you know, maybe a modern take on the umbrellas maybe scattered about. I think that would be pretty cool. So this is like a sketch of the plan. I can't give you any site information because um, that would be a breach of my contract. So yeah, all you need to know, right, is that this is like the area that we have to work with. And you know, there's like terrace housing there and school behind here and commercial areas here. And this is the main road, okay? So these are all not built yet. These are all part of the development. And yeah, the resort and the zoo and the orchard will be somewhere down here main entrance is to the north there okay the first thing i did was to you know separate the volume separate the site and play with the forms to create like grand openings on both sides because uh, there's a road here so people can enter from the top there on the bottom here and also there's a road here connecting the com commercial area with school and then after that kind of had thought about you know if I divide it into two, I might just have like a performance kind of gathering, like a central courtyard kind of space in the middle. And then uh, for the programs, I separated the markets into the building that's 
that's next to the road. The market will be the busiest part of the program. So, you know, kind of want to attract a crowd. Then on the other building, we can have all the other services. You know, we could have shops, uh, you know, essential shops. Then you could have the workshops here. You know, the workshops I talked about. And then we can have food stalls here. Of course, you have toilet here and logistics. You know, the market probably needs like kind of storage areas like cold storage and delivery kind of area as well like a loading dock I decided to put parking away from the main road because i don't think it's very attractive to have to see cars approaching a building the thing is i looked into this under one roof by kengo kuma and why i looked into it is because the project is very similar because uh this one is located right in the center in the city as well and it's, con and it's near like a, a multiple like areas of interest i like how it's not physically imposing you know it's permeable in a way like it connect it helps like facilitate connection to other areas of the of the city so see how i uh, spaced out these kind of paper cut cutouts. Uh, I kind of want to create openings on on all sides because it's surrounded by other building typologies. So I want to create entrances everywhere so people can come in from everywhere. You know, it's like a permeable building. Then I looked into how market stalls are arranged. This one in China at the food market is like it's a smaller radio block it's not like a linear pattern that stretches out the entire length like for this one see how there's like three main paths and um then subs then um secondary paths going down the stalls and you know the stalls are not too long and they're broken down and i also i also like this one in um by mvrdv it's called market hall and these are just like individual stalls scattered about and and i kind of prefer this because it's more like informal you know it's a free flow uh, circulation instead of having to you know, walk the entire length just so you can go to the next one and so yeah I did some sketches on how stalls could be arranged see the linear ones feels a bit too formal and a bit restrictive with your where you want to go and the radio stall arrangement right it creates more you know freedom and spaciousness but the bad thing about this is that you have to compromise on security you know you can't possibly keep an eye out in all direction you know some people might steal things so maybe like a combination of both you know you have a radio one but then you split it into like half or like a quarter shared by multiple vendors so general layout is still a free flow pattern but you know you still get that layer of security there okay so this market in china uh the roof form is pretty interesting how they how it creates an inviting view see this would be like a normal normal you know kind of gable roof but then they created like folds like an origami folds yes of course like you can you can still go in on the sides with this one but this one is like more open it's like we can go in on this side as a part two we only have to go in we can only go from the front and back so this is what i was looking for you know uh permeability and you know free open plan arrangement kind of thing so yeah thinking about the roofs of all the longhouses and then i thought about the malay Jin kind of roof which has more you know curvy kind of shapes to it and I sketch it out then I thought about how to you know create two entrances that are similar um, maybe like at the end at the at the end of one you have it high and at the end of one you have it low and yeah this is what I came up with a kind of like a mixture of both uh, old architecture and new architecture so yeah we could have you know pieces of this joined together and I was thinking maybe could have the roof all the way down to the floor feels a bit more cozy i think and yeah we could have openings on the side that invite people in as well from from all sides so yeah that's uh my proposal so yeah, this was just like a very quick sketch uh to show people something on on on, on friday and yeah i still have like a ton of things i had to research on for this project so yeah this is definitely not the <laughs> this is probably not going to be the the final outcome so yeah, that's uh, what I've done for the past week for my first week at work and yeah I'm excited for our second week uh, which is tomorrow today is Sunday so yeah see you guys later <laughs>